Welcome to a brand new video guys. Today we are going to be fixing up this old Chevy Corvette interior. Let's get started. So I think we can all agree that the C6 interior is not the most exciting or exhilarating interior, but it is designed for functionality. Like the, the placement, the cockpit is well constructed. I am really a fan of how I feel when I am behind the wheel of the car with a couple exceptions. The cobalt steering wheel is absolutely trash. Not sure why they used a cobalt steering wheel in this car, but that's trash. We have a replacement for that. Um, and then of course, you know, it's a 09. So some features in the car are dated like the radio system and stuff. This has an aftermarket radio, but the previous owners, or I don't know yet until we pull the dash, really, I'm not gonna go into that extent yet has left it like a couple inches outside of the dash. It almost looks like I have a microwave in my dashboard. So I want to go ahead and see if I can fix that. And then the bigger problem here, and what's really led me to this video and the changes I'm making today is the dashboard. This is a 3LZ Corvette. So the 3LZ and I think the 2LZ's Corvettes came with a leather wrapped dash. So your dash looked like everybody else's. I think if you didn't have a leather wrapped dash, your basic, your, your foundation was just the graphite gray. Um, or black. When you have a leather wrap dash is when you see those Corvettes that have the proper stitching over the Corvette uh, logo up on the passenger airbag and then you can see a lot of the two-tone options. This car does have the two-tone option. It has black and gray. I don't know what the OEM color codes are for it or anything like that. Black and gray. This car obviously had that leather wrap dash. So when you have the leather wrap dash, you know, obviously they're very pretty if they're well maintained, but they are known to over the course of time to start to bubble and lift. Um, the adhesive just kind of starts to let go. And then what ends up happening is if you wait too long, the leather kind of starts to uh, compress a bit from the different, the changes in temperatures. And then it gets really hard to repair. So you basically have two options. You either take it into an upholstery shop and have them repair it. I have seen videos of where they remove the windshield to kind of keep the dash in place because the dashboard to remove is a nightmare or obviously you remove the dash and correct it. And then option two is you basically go about replacing your dashboard, which is a lot of money and sometimes not worth it. The previous owner of this car though, chose to go with option C or three. I don't remember which, if I was using numbers or letters before, which is to just go ahead and rip the thing off. And when they do that, right, the problem starts to happen closer to the windshield where it starts to bubble. Um, it's not the entire dash. You're gonna run into some adhesive that still works pretty damn well. Um, and this dashboard is evident of it. There is chunks missing from the dashboard. And where there's not chunks, you can kind of see where the adhesive was just ripping the structure of the dashboard off. And it just now has this very rough texture, almost like if there was residual glue just kind of sitting there. I've tried all kinds of chemicals. I've even tried doing a light sanding on it to see if I can repair it because it just looks atrocious. It's disgusting um, and nothing's really worked. So I got fed up, got on Facebook Marketplace, got on eBay. Um, I found the leather wrap, but obviously the leather wrap was about 500 bucks. Plus you got to take it to a shop to go ahead and do it. Um, I looked at eBay dashboards and stuff like that. And you can find an eBay dashboard between four to 500 bucks as well, you know, shipped to your house. Um, I was fortunate enough to find one on Facebook Marketplace for about $200. I will say it's not a 3LZ dash, it's a Grand Sport dash, so it does not have, um, it will not be leather wrapped. But ultimately, this is a race car. This is my race car. This is not, I'm not worried about having it pristine. I just don't want it to look like absolute garbage like it looks like right now. So that dash only had, was a dash out of a Grand Sport with about 40,000 miles. It looks impeccable. We're going to replace that one. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna fix the radio. Like I had mentioned a little bit earlier, the radio sticking out about two inches, which is just, it just looks like a microwave. It might be the design of the double din. It might not fit in place, but since I have the dash out, I have an opportunity to organize some of the wires and see if I can get it those couple inches back. So it cleans up the dashboard. And then last but not least, we do have a new steering wheel to put into this. The cobalt steering wheel, not only is it thin, long, very wide, but, um, with my time on track, I realized it can be a little slippery uh, just because of the, the leather construction of it and the time that it has in the car. Um, so I went with uh, an Alcantara steering wheel and I went with the Alcantara mainly because I want my gloves to really grip that steering wheel. I want to feel like I have a firm grip of the steering wheel at all times. So 
we're going to do that as well since we have to remove the steering wheel to actually uh, finish the dashboard removal. So we've got a long project ahead of us. I'm going to try to record as much as I can. I can't promise because there's just so much to do. Um, but I'll try to record as much of it or at least hint, uh, hit at the spots of, of importance here. So let's jump into this. Let's get started. So before we jump into this, let's take a look at the steering wheel. Um, this is a new one here. This is from uh, that eBay brand that uh, I've seen quite a few different other C6s run. I, it's Revensol or Revsol, one of those two. I'll link it down in the descriptions. A lot of people run the carbon fiber options or just the leather wrapped options. Um, I couldn't really find a whole lot of reviews on the Alcantara one. Um, I really just found people really buying the, the carbon fiber options and like I said, the leather wrapped options. But I feel like this car has a lot of carbon fiber on it and I didn't want to add more and more to it just because it is an 09. It, it is a little bit older and carbon fiber wasn't adopted as much as we're using it now. So I, I wanted this one and again, the Alcantara is gonna be a bit stickier for me um, and help me keep my grip on it. But immediately, and I'll go into a comparing and once I pull it off, is the thickness of the steering wheel is much thicker. Well, not much, but it's definitely thicker than the other one. Obviously it's got the cut bottom. Um, so I'm excited for that. Not really a big deal on the cup bottom. I would have been fine with a round one as well, but it's just going to allow me a little more clearance when I put the racing seats in to get my leg in and out of the car. So um, that stuff's cool. And then obviously the Alcantara, it, this is not a high priced steering wheel, guys. So I'm not going to hold it accountable to, you know, it's wear and stuff like that. But I will give a six month review, a one year review. But this car sits in the garage right here, pretty much majority of its time. Um, except for when it's out on track or maybe a quick little Sunday drive, but hasn't driven in three weeks as of right now. And I live in Florida. I could drive this thing year round. So I don't expect it to really fall apart immediately. The, the few reviews I've seen, they've been decent. So we'll put this in once we remove the other one and we get the new dash back in um, and see how it goes. And right here, we obviously have the Grand Sport dash and it's been sitting on my floor now for probably a month and a half, maybe a little bit longer. So I am excited just to get it out of the way. Um, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit and then swap it in. Like I mentioned, this is a 3LZ. So the 3LZ, you have the options to do these color combos, right? So my, my car has the, I guess, black with, I guess, gray or whatever the color co coding is for it. It's obviously got the center console the same and it's obviously got the doors the same. That won't be the case because obviously right now, the dashboard is all black because that piece that was black and gray was torn off. So um, it'll kind of look the same that it does now. It just won't look like utter crap. So I'm excited to get that out, but obviously there's a lot to remove. So this is gonna be one heck of an undertaking, but I gotta do it. You spend most of your time in your cockpit. You don't wanna be staring at junk and making your car feel, making you feel like your car is a piece of crap just because this is what you're looking at. So gonna clean it up and uh, hopefully I'll feel a little bit better about it and obviously get rid of that steering wheel. So the first thing I kind of did was just disconnect the battery because I know I'm gonna get to the airbag in a minute. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna start here, right? This is just one long piece here, right? And I don't wanna damage any of this carbon fiber. So I'm gonna loosen this up and then start getting under this and see if I can pull this out. And then I'll work my way up um, the car, but I wanna start here. My shift knob has been loose forever, so I can go ahead and back that out. This car does have an MGW shifter, and I really wanted a round shift knob. So it does say Hurst on it, but there is no Hurst shifter in this car. Just a shift knob. And I do like the thickness That's what she said. <laughs> of this one definitely oh, it feels good in the hand when you're out on track or just driving it aggressively. Little torque screws right here. Um, then obviously you've got two 10 millimeter sockets back here, but I can see that there's a split here between these two dash components. So I'm going to try to avoid removing the most possible. So I'm going to leave this back piece, just start with these two torques here, back these out. It looks like they're, these torques have been replaced with something else because those washers don't look factory. So you might have a different setup here. Um, 
because there was some wires ran for the radio into here and stuff like that. So um, you might have a separate situation, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two torques, see if it loosens anything here, because obviously everything's pretty solid right now. And then I'm gonna slowly just start to pry around and see if I can get anything to kind of respond. Those two screws and immediately started to get some play here, but not enough yet on this side. Um, just gonna kind of wiggle it around a little bit, not really yanking, just kind of slightly tugging. There goes another clip. And just kind of seeing which ones have the tight spots. This is an older car, you know, and obviously this has been removed once before, so it's making it a little bit easier if your car's never had any of the components changed here. That might be a little bit snugger than you'd hope, but um, I'm gonna start working around here and see if I can get this to communicate. This side is still pretty solid. Um, there's a panel here next to the passenger side, so I might have to switch to that side and kind of pull that off uh, Because everything else is kind of this is pretty much almost free at this point if I start to get around here I should be able to pop it right off that can run you some issues now. I Don't know what I'm gonna experience here So I don't want to pull too hard like I mentioned because I obviously electrical 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 I don't want to pull any harnesses Accidentally, so I'm just trying to get enough space where I can look under it and see what I have to disconnect and what I can avoid disconnecting at the same time. So the uh, the center console trim, I guess you can call it, has been removed. Um, Obviously you have your heated seats controllers, you have your cigarette lighter here, your cigarette lighter here, your hazards, all those need to be unplugged, so be careful when you remove it. Um, earlier we talked about the radio. As of right now, it doesn't seem like I can get this doubled in any further back. Um, I need to loosen this anyways to get the dashboard out, so I do have to mess with the radio and this. Um, so we'll see as we get a little bit further along, but as of right now, I'm not too optimistic about, you know, pushing this microwave in further back. Um, so let's keep at it. I still got to remove the glove box, um, steering wheel, start working on all the actual dashboard screws. Right now I'm just removing all the accessories um, and seeing, you know, to, to kind of expose more of the actual uh, screws that are actually built into this thing. It's a lot of work, a lot of work. Definitely don't do it if you don't need to. So my mic recently died, so audio is going to be not the greatest for the next few moments as I get the uh, the wireless mics kind of charged up a bit. But I don't know where it cut off or how long it's been off for. So just to give a quick update, center console's out. The I mean, sorry, not the center console. The glove box is out. The center trim with the stair with the radio and the AC uh, control module is also removed. Uh, center bezel here around the instrument cluster also removed. Um, my uh, my instrument cluster is loose. I haven't really moved it just yet because I do have to remove it from this dashboard. And now I'm removing this bottom panel. It's pretty much clips along the side, but there are some screws at the bottom. I've kind of been tugging at it for a little bit, realize the screws, um, and it is a uh, T15 Torx. So I'm just gonna go ahead and back those screws out and keep on my merry way here. I believe I'm at the point of where I can pretty much start to remove the actual dash. But before I do that, I do want to get the airbag off, start working on removing the steering wheel. I don't know why they say you've got to remove the steering wheel to remove the dash. I'm assuming there's some sort of, oh, maybe here, but I don't, I don't see where I'm going to unmount the dash from here. I'm gonna use the other dash as kind of the points of. Oh, wait a moment. This dash comes down into here and bolts to here. I guess I gotta start loosening and seeing where it's at. So, um, 
the steering wheel is basically just you know there's these two slots here like like they say please make sure you uh and you're gonna kind of feel these little unlock points where you can kind of just And there you go, popped out all by itself. Remove the two clips. I hate airbags, I am terrified right now, even though there's no charge. I just hate it. I don't want this thing blowing up in my face. Here's my strategy. Basically, here, let me grab this camera and I'll show you. We're at the point of no return, right? Airbag's been removed. Um, glove box, all the center. Everything is there. There's a bolt down here, a 10 millimeter, which is loosened this side. There was two 10 millimeters right there, which loosened down here, not really the top yet. And then there's a crap ton of nuts here that gotta be removed. Here's one right here. There's two back there. I'm gonna go ahead and work bottom up. Remove all of these, work my way up the dash and as it goes loosening, I'll go shaking it a bit, I'm sure. There's probably some screws hitting behind these pillar covers. So we might have to work with that. And I do believe there's one in the center. And I still have not done the HUD. Um, I tugged on that one a little bit and might have broken a clip. So I'm not too thrilled with that. I'm gonna take my time on that one. But everything else is ready to go. So I'm gonna start working my way from the bottom up and kind of see where we proceed. So to give you guys a little bit of an update, because I know I've gone dark with the camera. It's just been uh, so much work. The steering wheel is completely removed. I think I got a small clip of that. I actually forgot to record while I was removing it, but got a small clip of that. The dash is completely loose on the driver's side. Passenger side is still fighting me. I noticed I got it pretty much disconnected from the airbag that's right here, and then it should be able to slide out. So I'm almost at the home stretch. It's just getting this one removed. Um, I do imagine putting in the new one is going to be a bit of a pain in the rear, but I'm going to work on these bottom screws here. There's some screws beneath here to kind of the, the, the tray that the airbag kind of mounts to to slide this dash out, and then we should be ready to rock and roll. The dashboard is about out. It's completely loose, um, but I'm running into a small issue. The car has an aftermarket radio, and uh, it's not a big deal. I just really hate cutting wires, um, and they, you know, of course, no discredit to the radio shop that installed this. They, uh, they routed the wires from the outside of the dash back into the inside of the dash, so it's wrapped around and I can't pull the dash out without cutting it. I'm trying to see if I unplug a couple extra harnesses, if I might get lucky, but right now it doesn't seem likely. Um, wait a moment. Where's this black wire leading? This black wire. All right, this one is loose, so that's good. I can... All right, we are potentially in business. I just got to disconnect here. Sorry, not there. Well, technically there too. And right here. And we might be in business. I might not have to. Fantastic, I don't have to cut anything from what I can see, because this cable will lay here. This cable, where are you going? This cable will also lay here. Now I can pull the dash out. Oh, we got some cables climbing over, but this will stay here as well. Fantastic. What is this? What is this? Alright, let's just get this guy out of here then. I think we might be in business. I got it. <sighs> let's see. I need to get these wires to the other side. That way I know that I'm in the clear to pull on the dash and not cause damage to anything. We got some wiring right here that needs to come to the other side of the dash. So we don't so we don't damage it. We got a random blue wire. Uh, there's gotta be there's always gotta be one, right?
pants. Oh, crashing into the steering car. I see. Let me turn this off. Okay. So the dashboard is completely out. Um, we're going to switch over to the new Grand Sport dash. We've already got the steering wheel pretty much configured. Um, obviously, I need to put the airbag in, but that'll be at the, once it's in the vehicle. Um, again, I'll link this in the description. Um, I love it. It feels so nice. I can't wait to drive with this thing. But uh, we're going to get to the hard part now, which is bringing in the dash and ensuring nothing happens to the car while we do so. So let's get on the your fucking hand wide open. What are, you, what are you getting stuck on? There's a piece of a uh, bracket. Yeah, just careful. All right, I'm going to get in with you now. Okay. guys dashboards installed the radio's been corrected in a much more um, flush fashion where it's not sticking out those two inches really looking like a microwave and the biggest change outside of the dash was more for my personal purposes because it was just so beat up um, was that Alcantara steering wheel it absolutely looks phenomenal in the car I'm really really excited to test it and drive it I actually haven't moved it since I installed it um, but uh, I will be taking it out for a drive soon and kind of getting my feel for it. But I absolutely love aesthetically how the car is coming together. Uh, the next mod interior wise will be these seats. These are definitely not designed for road course use. I would say they're more structured for a bit of a hybrid, more of a comfort spirited drive. But for the track purposes, I need a race seat in this car. So I will be removing these. I'm in between a um, red Sparco or a black Sparco QRTs is basically what I'm looking at. The reason for the red is because the entire car is black front to back. Um, really, there's no other color accents. So I figured red seats would really pop inside the interior. But now having a clean dash, a clean steering wheel, I am kind of liking the elegance of just keeping the all black nature of the car. So I might be leaning towards a black seat. So drop a comment below. Let me know. Should I do red? Should I do black? Um, cause that will be something I will be purchasing, um, in the next few months. And if you've watched this far, make sure you smash that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel. A lot more content coming. Um, but for now I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.